I used some white oak for this build. It reacts really well to sharp tools, and even though mine are certainly not the sharpest, they uh, they do a fairly good job of getting things nice and flat and smooth. So I'm just marking up the four main pieces that I need here, the two long kind of stretches that go down the length of the saw and the two handle parts. Cutting them all out with a rip saw that I inherited. Uh, quite lucky to inherit that as well as a few other saws, including this cross cut that you can see here as well. <laughs> it's not a completely square cut, but I, I'll sort that out later. Uh, I'm just using a jointer here to flatten the board and the long stretches and then these are the four pieces done the four main pieces here I'm marking out the tenons of the stretches that will be drawboard drawboard in later with some walnut pegs I don't know if walnut is exactly a good material for it but it's just what I had on hand and it was going to create a kind of contrast so uh, I went for that Using a router plane here to keep the tenon sheets parallel with the face of the stretcher. And then just using a chisel to kind of uh, finish it off afterwards. Cutting off down into the corners so it sits nicely in the joint. I used a chisel for this first uh, mortise that I made. Just because the chisel was pretty much the right size for the mortise, so I thought, okay, I'll do that. But it ended up being kind of awkward, taking quite long, so I used a, a bit and brace for the rest of it and cleaned it up with a chisel, which went faster. So at this point I started cutting the cross-off lap joints for the pieces of wood to go into that would keep the blade straight make sure to chisel upwards when I do this because uh, sometimes chiseling straight or chiseling down will break out the wood at least if there's some kind of crazy grain in there then I know that chiseling upwards will give me the best chance of not making a mistake and finishing off with the router plane and just marking up the joint onto the other piece that's going to go on there it's a fairly simple process Here I am using my squeaky brace through the uh, handle part of the frame and this is where the hook bolt will go through and be tightened from the outside with a lock nut and keep the blade tensioned. In hindsight I think there's probably a better way to fix this. I have seen a couple of other frame saws. This to me was just the kind of simplest way but I don't think it's the best way because I think the blade might wear down over time and then it'll make the blade useless so we'll come back to that later in the video usually people will do a scroll or a spiral on the ends of the handles of the frame saw but I decided to carve some oak these into it it's made from oak and I like carving so I kind of put two and two together and decided to do a little bit of carving on the end it didn't take too long and it was quite enjoyable so I thought why not this bit you could always do with a coping saw, or with a jigsaw, if you're a power tool guy, or even a bandsaw. But, uh, I don't know, there's something about doing it with a chisel that's just really enjoyable. Kind of using the weakness of the wood against itself and by splitting the grain away. And then of course, pairing with a chisel is, you know, it's one of the most enjoyable things you can do. I think, in woodworking, I absolutely love it, it's one of my favourite things. Just adding a couple of extra details here, cutting out with a coping saw, and then rounding over the edge a bit because I thought if my hands are going to be on there, which they were in fact when I started holding it, then I'd want it to be kind of comfortable and not so squarish. And just carve my logo in there. So now I'm figuring out the dowel holes for the draw bore, just letting the point of the bit break through the other side and then I drilled back in through the other side 
to make sure there was no breakout on the bottom. And here I am cutting the black walnut into little pieces to make dowels, punching it through my dowel pipe. And like I said, I don't know if that's the, the best word for it, but uh, we'll find out, I guess. Now I'm just marking the holes and then going a little bit further backwards. And then the dowel will go in through the top and kind of backwards into the tenon towards the shoulder of the tenon and then back out through the bottom of the handle part which will draw the tenon in as tightly as possible so cutting too far on that tenon but it's fine, it fits, it works so I put a little bit of glue on, it's not really necessary with drawboard tenon but you know, for some reason I just feel like I had to put glue on it now I'm bashing the peg through, I did actually get my measurements slightly wrong and the two dowels on the other side didn't come through as well but they came through a fair bit, so it was fine. Now I'm putting some linseed oil on it. Not for any particular reason, I just heard that linseed oil is an oil that people generally use for tools, so that's what I did. Now breaking the bandsaw blade, I actually tried to do this with an angle grinder and heating, treating it and everything, and then I found out you can do that, just snap them. And same thing with the drill here, I used this fancy old drill that I got recently from eBay for about £35. Uh, it needs some maintenance, um, some things need to be changed in it a bit, but I thought I'd try and use it for this and see it works really well. I just kept a can of uh, WD-40 at hand just to cool it down a bit. Um, but I tried heat treating and everything, but apparently you don't need to heat treat. I actually ruined a couple of blades by doing the heat treating. They, they snapped when I put them in a the saw, and the other one, when I tensioned it up, it just made the hole really huge. So I didn't do any kind of heat treating or anything. Just tried to keep the heat really low so nothing... You know, nothing changed in the blade. I'm putting the hook, hook bolts through now. Like I said, I don't think this is the best way to do it, but this is just the way that came to mind, the simplest way that came to mind in my head at the time. I think it might wear the blade over time on the holes and then make that blade unusable. So I think I either need to reinforce the blade or change the way that it's uh, fastened to each end. Um, now I'm putting those pieces in that keep the blade straight. So I'm open to any suggestions as to how to make the blade fixings a bit more permanent. You can see it works pretty well. Uh, I didn't go for any particular bandsaw blade, I just went for the one that looked the most like a ripsaw really. And the blade is about an inch wide. And yeah, so I have some extra stuff. In case I ruin this blade, I've got a couple more pieces that I could make. And please, any comments or suggestions on what you would change and what you would do to make things better or things work a bit more smoothly or, or whatever else you change. I'd love to hear them. And, uh, yeah, I sawed that pretty quickly, another piece of oak. My resawing skills need a bit of practice, but apart from that, it was good. And it's much less effort than using a ripsaw. Anyway, I really hope you enjoyed that and hopefully I'll catch you soon. Thank you very much for watching.